I just went to go check the mail. It's cold outside. Waiting for my glasses to change back to indoor lighting, and then we'll be ready to go. So let's get started. All right, looks like they're back to normal. Uh, let's get started. Welcome to Cybersecurity 101. I'm Mark Hemingway, content producer here at Archer Energy Solutions. Um, today's topic is sandboxing. Um, not familiar with this term, uh, except for the, when you go to the parks and things like that. So let's, uh, let's see what it is. So if you're unfamiliar with the show, uh, I use ChatGPT to help me learn different cybersecurity terms, and I'm bringing you along for the ride. If you're interested, that's great. We can learn together. Okay, so let's get started. So already loaded into ChatGPT is in cybersecurity. What is sandboxing? Sandboxing is a security mechanism that isolates applications or processes from the rest of the system to prevent potential harm from malware or malicious activities. Okay. Sounds like that's a good thing. Tell me I think we have ourselves good. something good today. Ah, I wore my white hat. I'm excited that maybe we're dealing with something that's good today. Let's dive a little deeper and find out. Loaded in over here is so sandboxing is a good thing? Fingers crossed. Yes, sandboxing is generally considered a good thing in cybersecurity because it helps to prevent malware or malicious software from causing harm to a system's network. Okay, yay! It's uh, 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 uh. a dance that I'm never gonna do again. All right, being as it's a good thing, let's find out how does sandboxing protect a system. Sandboxing protects a system by isolating potentially harmful programs or processes from the rest of the system, preventing them from accessing sensitive data or causing damage. Awesome. So just kind of like, Let's find out some more. Let's learn some more. I'm not gonna just start speculating. Like other things we've dealt with, there's multiple different forms of them. So let's find out, are there different types of sandboxing? Yes, there are three different types of sandboxing, including software-based sandboxing, hardware-based sandboxing, and network-based sandboxing. So, okay, so software, got it. Hardware, that's your hard drives and all that, or your, your actual computers themselves. Software is the actual stuff that goes on the computers and network having to do with, well, the network. So, okay, interesting. Moving right along, how does sandboxing impact system performance? Sandboxing can impact system performance as it requires additional resources to isolate and monitor processes. Okay, however, the extent of the impact depends on factors such as the implementation method and the workload of the system. Okay, so the bigger it is, the more it's gonna impact it. The smaller it is, you're probably not gonna notice it. Interesting, I like how it just isolates it from everything, making, I'm assuming it's making it feel like it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing, but it's not, it's just being looked at and monitored observed and watched cool all right riding that same tidal wave let's see uh, are there limitations or drawbacks to sandboxing yes there are limitations and drawbacks to sandboxing these may include performance overhead potential evasion of sophisticated malware and the need for continual updates to keep up with evolving threats okay so um, you gotta make sure that you keep it updated or you're not going to catch the latest and greatest. And so don't forget to do that. Patch, updates, all that fun stuff. Do it. Do it now. We'll do it when the video's over. Wait till the end. The end is going to be so good. I hope. Here at Archer, we deal with um, a lot of protection and overseeing of critical infrastructure spaces. So with that being said, what role does sandboxing play in critical infrastructure? Sandboxing plays a crucial role in critical infrastructure by helping to protect vital systems and networks from cyber threats, such as malware and cyber attacks. It adds an extra layer of security to prevent potential harm from critical operations. All right. So it's everywhere. It's you and me. It's the big things that uh, 
run our world, our power, our water, all the things that are critical to um, us not living in the dark ages like we used to. All right, so sandboxing in a nutshell is a good thing. Uh, it's, you know, looking for these different things that, you know, could be on your computer and at the same time when it finds it, it isolates it and, and monitors it and, uh, I don't know, let me know in the comments what else it does. I'm sure there's more things. Tell me, please. Uh, I'm, I'm curious as to, to what else it does. I mean, what is it doing when it's holding on to that? Um, but we're gonna have to wrap this episode up. What is a real life sandboxing incident? One real life sandboxing incident occurred in 2017 when the Petya, not Petya ransomware, outbreak impacted organizations worldwide. It exploited vulnerabilities in the Windows operating system to spread rapidly across networks. Sandboxing could have potentially limited its impact by isolating and containing the malware before it could propagate further. Okay, so uh, the real life episode that happened probably could have been prevented to have gone further if sandboxing would have been employed uh, at those particular stages. So sandboxing, good. Um, again, like, uh, like I always say, if there's more to this that I'm not getting, Leave it in the comments below, so that I can uh, that I can I can learn more and I can I can update on a further episode or another episode, letting people know um, what we should have learned, and there's more to it type of a thing. So, anyway, sandboxing good, yay for a good episode. So, anyway, thanks again for joining me on another episode of Cybersecurity 101. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our socials at uh, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And also follow us on our YouTube at ArcherU. So until next week, um, stay safe out there on the good old World Wide Web. And um, we'll see you then. Bye. You can catch new episodes every Thursday. Follow us on YouTube at ArcherU. Like, subscribe, and click the bell notification to be notified when a new episode has been released. Is there a question or a topic you'd like Mark to address on an upcoming episode of Cybersecurity 101? Leave them in the comments below and check back in every Thursday for a brand new episode.